Yeah. Welcome to Spring Roll 4506 Part 2, a TV news magazine show of Spring Roll, Ohio. On Part 2 of our show, we'll visit the schools and talk to ROTC cadet and pilot extraordinaire Sophia Rausch. At the Warren County Career Center, we'll hear all about their cosmetology program with Department Coordinator Stephanie Seeley. There's still time to get your golf in, and the pros ahead of wood give us all the reviews. This year we're rocking around a Christmas tree, and Doug Beaky decided to tell us all about Christmas in Springboro. Co-host Carrie announces our 2022 Chamber winners, and I'll meet your neighbor. We'll talk to Springboro resident and dear friend Heather Brown. And it's all happening right now on Springboro 45066 Part 2. We are still at Clerk Creek Fire Department, Part 2, 45066. Welcome to the show. So glad to be back. Truly. And it truly, it's absolutely truly. So let's get off on the right note. We're going to go to the schools, right? Yes, yes. I had the opportunity to go uh, speak with the most fascinating uh, junior ROTC cadet, Sophia Rausch, about how she spent her summer learning and kind of earning her, her pilot license. And it was just such an interesting program you know, competing with all of these other students to even qualify for this program. It just really, really such a fascinating young woman. Let's go check this out. All right. All right, we are at Springboro High School today, and we have a very special guest. I'm with Sophia Rausch, who is a senior at Springboro High School, and she was a recent recipient of the Air Force Junior ROTC Flight Academy Scholarship. Sophia, welcome to 45066, and congratulations. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about the Flight Academy Scholarship. Mm -hmm. So the Flight Academy Scholarship is something given out to cadets from all different uh, programs. They get sent to a host university to get their private pilot certificate. Wonderful. Now you were one of 200 students chosen out of 1,300 applicants. So I mean, that's outstanding. You had to have been so excited. I was. It was. It was a fantastic day. <laughs> and and this, this scholarship basically helps you get a private pilot's license. And this program was created to help kind of fill the void of, you know, the lack of pilots that the military and commercial fields are, are suffering right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the application process. What all did you have to do to apply? So in the application process, there was a physical fitness requirement, there was an academic requirement, your GPA, and you had to take an academic test called the AQT. Um, and cadets from uh, at least Air Force Junior ROTC faced that. I don't know how it was for other cadets. Okay, and obviously you, you nailed all of that because you were one of the 200 out of 1,300 that were chosen. Now this summer, you spent, what, eight and a half weeks mm -hmm. in North Carolina going through the program. Tell us a little bit about your time spent in North Carolina. It was fa obviously fantastic. Um, I couldn't be more grateful. Uh, by the, I mean, we got to spend it, you know, by the coast. We got to see Kitty Hawk and obviously learning to fly, which was more, you know, it was fantastic. So That sounds really, really neat. What was the hardest part about it? The hardest part, I mean, getting your private in eight and a half weeks is not a lot of time. Usually people take around a semester to a year, I hear. So um, we were flying every single day and, you know, with bad weather and stuff, it um, made it kind of difficult. But I'd say the most challenging part was uh, getting back to Ohio. It's definitely different flying coastal and um, in Dayton, Ohio. Sure, sure. Now, you still have to complete a little bit of it to get your private pilot license. Is that correct? Okay, so what do you still have to complete? So right now I'm working on, um, or working towards my stage check, which is, it's kind of like a pre-check ride, like a little pre-test for your check ride. And um, your check ride is, that's what deems you a private pilot versus a student pilot. So uh, just working towards that. Well, congratulations, this is so wonderful. And that scholarship that you won was worth over $22,000. Such an achievement. I'm very grateful. Well, I mean, we're all so proud of you. I mean, this is so wonderful, truly wonderful. And I understand that, you know, there have been, what, I believe two others out of Springboro that have done something similar, and they're all female. 
So girl power at Springboro mm -hmm. High School. Women in aviation. Definitely. Now tell us, do you plan on using this pilot's license to, you know, continue your career in the Air Force? Absolutely. I mean, I plan on going into um, Air Force ROTC and flying through the military from there. So hopefully the rest of my life I'll be flying. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, best of luck with that. And, you know, thank you for making us so proud. And, and we know that you will continue to thank make us so proud. Much. Back to you. Thanks, Sophia. We enjoyed our time with you, and we are so proud of your accomplishments. We can't wait to see what you do next. Absolutely. And our junior ROTC, the best in the land. They Truly. are the best in the land. Anyway, Career Center. We're going to go out to the Career Center. All right. I guess we have John Wright. Uh, on special assignment uh, on behalf of Don okay. uh, this time around. So let's go see that clip. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carrie. I'm here with Stephanie, who's the coordinator of the Warren County Career Center Cosmetology Department. And she's going to explain a little bit about what they do here. Stephanie? Hi, nice to meet you, yes, Jonathan. Yes, nice to meet you. So our cosmetology program covers everything from hair, nails, and skin. Um, it's a 1,500-hour program that takes um, right about a year to complete. Um, students start here with us, and half of their program is spent in our theory portion, and the other half is spent here in our lab, where they get to work on clients. Um, we run a full salon that's open to the public, so the customers you see here are real paying customers that come in. Um, they get great opportunities to work on customers while they're here. That's um, great. So the, the community can come in. Oh, yeah. All right. That's great. Absolutely. We do everything from haircuts to manicures and pedicures, um, facials, which is great. Cool. Um, and that's how the students learn. They learn by getting in there, using their hands, um, trying it out. And but these aren't just newbies. They they know what they're doing, right? Yes. I mean, to some extent, you know, I mean, yeah. they're learning, but they're, they, they, they've got, gone through the training. Absolutely. So okay. they are certified. Our students that are working on customers are certified to do so, meaning they've tested and passed um, academically and practically before they're working on a paying customer. Um, and that's how we get good at our craft, is by doing the services. So um, friends and family members come in, we have strangers off the street, and they get to practice a little bit of everything. Oh, that's awesome. So is this only for women? Do guys do it too, or to learn? Yeah, absolutely. So this cosmetology is open to everybody. So men, women, young, older, there's no, there's, there's no mold. So right, right. this field um, is accepting of everyone and um, our customers come in and will gravitate towards students that they connect with. So. Right. And so like any age can come in, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't have to be like you're making it a career. But it could just be you're making it a hobby or you want to learn. Right. Yeah, so cosmetology is great because it's very flexible. Um, and I always tell students when they come in where they're at in their lives now, um, their life's going to change down the road, whether right. they get busier or they have more time on their hands, whatever that may be. And this field allows you to grow and change as your life changes. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. We appreciate you being on the 45066 and commentating that at the Warren County Career Center, who does so much for the county. Anyway, it's time to go out to Heatherwood. There's yes. still time to play golf. It's cold, it's, it's hot, cold. it's cold, it's hot, but you can still play golf if you're a diehard. Thanks, guys. Hey, folks, I know we're getting ready for the really busy Christmas buying season. One thing I wanted to remind you about, I know you want to buy those special someones in your life something new to help them with their golf game for next year, I'm gonna give you a recommendation. Come to Heatherwood and buy a club fitting certificate. What happens is people go buy clubs for others and their family members and they get a club and it doesn't fit right, but they feel bad so they won't return it and get the right one. So what you wanna do, you would never buy somebody a pair of shoes without them trying it on and just guess on the size. It's the same thing with golf clubs. And we've got all the hottest new styles like the new Titleist TSR3. This face is actually specially made with military grade armor to help produce more ball speed. And I don't know about you, but military grade armor sounds like a lot of ball speed to me. So make sure you check us out. Come get your gift cards before we get to uh, Chris, the Christmas season, holiday season for your uh, club fittings and have them come out and see me. Thanks a lot, guys. Over to you, Stacy. Thanks, Matt. Welcome back to Heatherwood Golf Course. It is the end of October and we are now taking reservations for Santa Brunch. Please call me at 937-748-3222, extension 106, to make your reservation. 
The brunch will begin at 10.30 and Santa Claus will be on site, so bring your kids along to meet Santa Claus and have a delicious brunch. And as always, reach out to me to book your event for next year. Thanks guys, and back to you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate being on the show, giving us all the updates at the golf course. You know, I mentioned earlier about December. I know, and it's almost November, which means it's almost Christmas in spring. Oh my Burrow. goodness, yeah, it's coming up. It's so exciting. I had the opportunity to chat with Doug Beakey from the Christmas and Spring Bro Committee, and we talked about all things festival related, including this year's theme. Such a fun conversation. Shall we check it out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we are on Main Street in front of the Old Stone Church, which is a great indicator that we are getting ready for Christmas in Spring Bro. I'm here with Doug Beakey, who is going to talk to us a little bit about Christmas in Springboro. Doug, welcome to 45066. Thank you, Carrie, for having me back. I really appreciate it. Of course, it. it's always a pleasure to have you. Tell us a little bit about Christmas in Springboro 2023. Well, this is the 35th annual. Wow. Hard to believe. I, I mean, it's hard to imagine because we're not that old. No, not, definitely <laughs> not. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate <laughs> it. No, uh, 35th year. 18, 19, and 20 November. Yep. Always the weekend before Thanksgiving. Exactly. And it's going to be a big deal. Of course, as you know, all Main Street gets closed down, and we're going to have all kinds of things. The children's tent again, the entertainment tent. We have over 75 craft vendors already signed up. We've got 21 uh, food vendors. Wish we could have more. We have them on a waiting list. That's how wow. many we want to be. So it will be quite busy. The biggest thing, though, is right there is going to be the beer tent. Awesome. And the beer tent's going to be even better this year because not only is it a little bit larger than last year, okay. we've got it a DJ for having music. Fantastic. Large screen TVs for the football games so you don't have to go home to see the OSU Maryland game or the UC Temple game. You can just stay right here and watch it on the big screen and take in all the warp wing and crooked handle brew that you can handle. Wonderful. I, I mean, how could anybody complain about that? You can't complain. So it, again, everything else is pretty much the same. We've got the parade. It will be at 12 noon on Saturday. Of Come course. right through here. Right. And of course, uh, we have the opening ceremony. It will be 6 p.m. on Friday night. And that's at Rotary Park? Right over there. Okay. And we'll light up the Christmas tree and, and the lighting will be done by uh, the same folks, the Ohio Green Works. Wonderful. But it's going to be done differently this year than Ooh, last year, so we're okay. getting all new lighting, okay. which will be a lot of fun. Awesome. And so we'll have the opening ceremony. The Wright Brothers 3 Band is going to perform. They're always great. And the reason why is because this year's theme is rocking around the Christmas tree. I was just going to ask you, what's our theme for this year? Rocking around the Christmas tree, so it's going to be rock-style Christmas music. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to have a rockin' parade on Saturday then. Yes. So all of our floats, all of everything will be rock and roll themed. Absolutely, rock and roll themed, rocking around the Christmas tree. We love that, how oh, exciting, yeah. how exciting. So there's just lots of things going on. The entertainment tent will be down there. Sure. Lots of kids to perform. Right. Of course, Santa will be here. Right. Uh, parking will be a premium, so everybody get here early of for parking. Course. We're hoping to have a few other wrinkles to parking, but we don't know yet. Sure, sure. So we'll keep working on that. Wonderful. That's where we're going with it all. Okay. Now, something important to mention, that Christmas in Springboro is a, a charitable organization. Yes, absolutely. We don't make anything on this. Sure. We, we pay our bills, mm -hmm. and then all of, everything else goes to uh, FCAC, right. Franklin Food Pantry, and Operation Santa for the police department. It's wonderful, wonderful. So when you come out to support Christmas in Springboro, you're really supporting the Springboro Community Assistance Center, the Franklin Food Pantry, and Operation Santa. Correct. Wonderful. So, so, so you're giving charitable. back to you're the community. Back. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So we will see you Absolutely. and everyone else really in the community because I mean who in Springboro doesn't come to Christmas in Springboro? Everybody does. And oh, I, I, yes. can't, I can't stop enough to say thank you sponsors. We have so many sponsors that help so much with the expenses so that we can give back to the community. Uh, and there's just too many to list right here. Sure. So please check our website and there will be a nice article in the uh, 
Springboro Neighbors magazine again, and you'll see all of them listed. So there's a lot of folks that really put this together. Most definitely. And I'm sure you want to thank the volunteers as well, because I know without your committee, your volunteers, none of this happens. Our committee actually works year round. Uh huh. We will have our first meeting for next event in December yep. and start all over again. Uh -huh. And we meet at least monthly uh -huh. all the way through. Yep in order to plan this and so then we also have to have hundreds of volunteers right. during the weekend especially in the children's tent of course and so we just it's just it's a volunteer organization and it's how we get it done well thank you for all of your hard work i know i'm looking forward to the parade again of course saturday at noon we'll be rocking around the christmas tree yeah, that's right and you know of course i mean the whole weekend's going to be fantastic and if we have weather that's nice, we should set a record attendance. We came close last year. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. Well, thank you for all you do. We'll see all of you November 18th through 20th at Christmas in Historic Springboro, right here in the middle of Historic Springboro on South Main Street. Hmm? Thanks, Doug. It's always a pleasure to have a chat with you regarding Christmas in Springboro. We look forward to the festival and the parade, of course. Absolutely. And you're announcing the parade. I always. am with Jim Brown again this year. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a good one to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the, I mean, the theme, rocking around the Christmas tree. That's fun. That's Isn't fun. that going to be I like fun? That. I like that. That's good. Get I mean, in, you know. Get in the spirit. Right. Like, bring your shades, your leather jackets. We're going to be cool this year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you got some chamber winners. Yes, the Springboro Chamber of the Commerce. The gate was good this year. Thank you. I thought Over so too. Over 200 people. Yeah, 200 people in Heatherwood. We had a lovely dinner, awards, silent auction, live auction. You know, our chamber staff and the planning committee worked hard, and I think they they. You could tell. They they did a nice job Great this event. year. Great event. All right, so let's talk about some winners. Let's we can start with the mayor's award. Who did you give your award to this year, Mayor? Well, you know what? It didn't take a whole lot of that. We've had some great winners through the years. Well, yes, obviously. I mean, really had some great <laughs> winners through the years, but this year was no exception. Pastor Terry Carlisle, he is such a out there everywhere. Yep. He's here, there, everywhere. He's in the food pantry. He does it involved with the chamber, does counseling, Oktoberfest, and the list goes on and on and on. And Pastor Terry, we do appreciate what you do each and every day, not only on behalf of the ward, but as an iconic person in the city of Springboro Truly. and the township he community. Is, okay, he is wonderful. we love you. He is fantastic. Volunteer of the year was Lee Mershad, a Chick with Wicks candle company. The Community Spirit Award was Brittany Hurst with Puro Clean Emergency Services. The Founders Award was Carrie Robbins with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Professional Realty. Congrats. Thank you. I'm still a little shocked a little numb. And, and speechless about that one. Yeah, I was not expecting that. Well, good. Yeah, thank you. Surprises thank you. are nice. Surprises are definitely nice. Uh, then we have the Business Growth Award winner. Went to Heather's Gourmet Caramel Apples. Awesome. Yummy, yummy. I know. And then Business of the Year went to Minuteman Press in Centerville, Jesse Gaither and Company. What a great list of people. Well, well deserving. People. I, I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. Well, thanks to all the winners. I hear hey, a this is great. We still got it. We still got it. We can still run the drums. Meet your neighbor. Part two, Heather Brown. Yes, the what? lovely Heather she Brown. Is sensational. Let's go talk to Heather. Mm -hmm. Part two, Meet Your Neighbor. We are still at the Clear Creek Fire Department. Heather Brown is our Meet Your Neighbor. Heather, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Um, I am a Springboro resident. We've been here around six years, actually a little bit over. Um, I'm married with two kids that are in high school. So um, my husband's president of the community theater here. So we're very active with that and all that. What drove you to Springboro? Um, the schools were wonderful, yeah. um, obviously, and just the sense of com community here, um, the things we've heard from people, and um, it's just, it's comfortable here. It's not too big, it's not too small. We're close to major cities, and so we like that. Location, location, location. Absolutely. Not to mention amenities and all the good things that come Absolutely. with it. And I, I guess the thing that I love 
when I talk to people who come in the spring, they say, I want to be here forever. I love it here. Absolutely. You feel the same way? Okay. I was actually telling Carrie that the other day. Um, how old are your just, children? How old are they? They are 16. Um, Andrew is going to get his driver's license tomorrow, hopefully. Uh -oh. And then Allie is 18. Okay. She just turned 18 and she's a senior. So she's looking at colleges. That's exciting. It is exciting. Yeah, that is exciting. I'm that so. senior. Yeah. Well, hopefully you got a few years before you become empty nesters. Because when those kids finally flock away, you think you can't wait. And when they flock away, you what in the world happened? Where are they at? I know. Yeah. So we'll miss them. Enjoy them all you can while you got them Absolutely. there. Absolutely. they got to spread their fun. wings, you know, and, and go. But anyway, what do you like about Springboro and from our neighbor standpoint? What do you see as some of the things that we do good or do bad? Uh, what would you say somebody who's thinking about coming to Springboro? What would you, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, I think I would tell, just really tell them to, um, you know, look around at all the wonderful things that are here. We have wonderful parks. We have lots and lots of activities going on, you know, with festivals and the music during the summer and um, all the little restaurants and that type of thing in the area. So, you know, definitely taking a look at that. Um, it's really hard to say what what things are bad here. I wouldn't say there's really much of anything. I feel very safe here. Um, it's a great sense of community. Everybody's always been very welcoming and friendly. Isn't it amazing how when somebody has a challenge or a need, it seems like we are family, it rises the occasion. I've never seen anything like that or communities that I'm involved with that do it better than us. Absolutely. We really step up. I always see that. Um, on some of the, of the community pages, if somebody's in need, you don't even have to ask. People are just there to help. What can I do? You know, whether it's take a meal or gather things that people need, whether it's clothes or food mm -hmm. and supplies and that kind of thing. And you just don't see that at a lot of places. So yeah. it's nice. Well, do you see anything? You know, we ask what the accolades are, so to speak. What do you think we could do better? Would you, you see something that we could do a little better than what we do? Because we like to have right. constructive criticism, what we call it, to make us better. Right. We we think we have a good A game, and but you can always be better. Absolutely. I think we can always improve. Yeah. Um, so do you see anything that other than a upscale restaurant, which everybody wants? <laughs> what do you way. you see <laughs> something that we really? And we're working on it. Believe me. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, right, on it's not on the back burner. We're right. still working on All that. Right. But what could, what could we do? I mean, I guess we partner with the chamber. We partner with the schools. We partner with the township. And the four of us, so to speak, really work good together with all civic organizations, right. the Rotary, the Lions, the Optimus, and the, list, the Eagles. The right. list goes on and on. So there's always all kinds of networking going on. But what could we do better, if anything? I think the only thing I could really think of is sometimes parking, especially if we have a lot of events and that type of thing going on. Um, you know, just finding places to to park that are safe. And we see it. I mean, we see it at the Performing Arts Center a lot. If yeah. there's something going on at Warped Wing and then the theater, and if there's that uh, a concert going on in the little park there, mm -hmm. sometimes that area gets very congested. Yeah. But otherwise, well, the. The part about the Performing Arts Center, we have uh, one of our um, developers, real estate, that we have leased space for. And I don't think that maybe we've gotten the word out, we being the city, to let people know they can park there, right. which would help the parking Absolutely. aspect. As far as the concerts in the park in North Park, there's really nothing we can right. do about that except for maybe taking more land and making it more of parking because right. it's just grown so leaps much. and bounds. We're almost 25,000 people this year in our concerts Amazing. in the park. And when you have that kind of people, I mean, there's 8,000 people for Journey. Right. Resurrection. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. And, it's, and that's what we want to do. The amenities Absolutely. back in the community. Don't have just this big bank account. Get it out there. It's, you know, all Use the things. different things we do. And that's important to us. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes it even more of a community. So... What well, do you have anything you'd like to tell the audience on behalf of you and Jim? I don't know. We love it here. Um, we're we're happy to be here, and we look forward to many many more years of being involved. And as our kids fly and do their own thing, just 
loving the community more and more. So that's we, our goal. We appreciate Heather Brown. Appreciate her being with us today. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. Hmm? Thanks, Heather, for being on the show. As we close part two of 45066, we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, lots of turkey. Uh, lots of turkey. Christmas. I mean, Merry Christmas with happy, lots and happy, happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Be responsible, stay out of trouble, have <laughs> fun, and we will see you in 2023. Take care, stay safe, we love you. Bye for now.